Quad City Bay Area, thank you for a $5 super chat. Is TBS going to lay down on ELRS to pass them by, or do they got something brewing? Uh, I don't even know if I want to touch that question, Quad City Bay Area, because to touch that question, I would have to stipulate that ELRS is going to pass TBS by, and uh, I feel like that's a hot potato that I, I uh, don't feel like uh, touching because <laughs> I'm a coward. <laughs> um, ELRS is, is doing some really, really impressive things. Uh, let's take it this way. Purely in terms of performance, in terms of link latency, uh, and in terms of range, ELRS is comparable, at least, to Crossfire and Tracer. And in terms of link latency, ELRS is significantly faster than Tracer and Crossfire. So... Uh, there are ways in which ELRS is definitively worse, such as uh, the c consistent quality of the hardware. You buy an ELRS receiver from some vendors, it'll be good from other vendors, and you're rolling the dice. And uh, that's something that many people don't want to deal with. And they're just like, F this, I'm just going to buy Crossfire and be happy. So there are ways that Crossfire uh, still absolutely beats ELRS. But many people are happy to buy something cheap, cross their fingers that it's good, look on the Discord server and see which vendors are making good hardware and which ones should be avoided. And uh, those people are excited about what ELRS is doing in terms of technology. There's no doubt that ELRS has released a lot of exciting new features in the last year, and Crossfire hasn't. Like, what has Crossfire done in the last year? Well, we can answer that question. Hold on. And get a Crossfire module out here and we'll plug it in. This is the Crossfire module that I almost never fly. This is my old V1 module. That's why you're going to see it has a super old firmware on it. My actual module that I fly every day is up to date. Just for the record, somebody's going to be like, Bartwell doesn't, he didn't even update his Crossfire module. Don't do that. Let's see here. What I really want to do, though, is just look at the release notes. So August 5th, they released 619. Updated OTA protocol. Bootloader update for micro TX to fix. So bug fix. Encryption of telemetry and PPM data when enabled. That's, that's, I don't know. Uh, I don't know who wanted that. Someone obviously wanted that. Uh maybe uh i i'm not sure what hobbyist wanted that or why they decided that was desirable uh i wonder it makes me wonder if they're selling to like a government agency or something and they wanted that and that's why they put it in it doesn't feel like something that hobbyists demanded like who cares if your telemetry is encrypted but all right direct connection of uBlocks gps supported on port three or four that's kind of cool revised vtx handling if you're using the VTX, that could be beneficial. I'm not sure what, uh, what the benefit that has. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, if you're using smart audio, that won't matter. Faster pit mode recovery for 69 team racing. Pretty niche application. Crossfire V3 re-enabled. Crossfire V3 was disabled because of a bug that caused fail safes when used with Betaflight 4.3. The baud rate negotiation wasn't happening reliably and it was causing fail safes. So, um... Uh, for anybody who's like, man, Express LRS has bugs. Crossfire never has bugs. Well, nothing never has bugs. GPIO output feature. Not sure what that is. 617. Disables Crossfire V3 due to beta flight problems with certain beta flight. Flight controllers. 616. Bug fixes. 613. This was the one with the bug that caused uh, fail safes. Bug fixes. Lots of bug fixes. Surprising number of bug fixes. 
uh, interesting. I mean, I just I just assumed that there uh, were no bugs in Crossfire. I don't know why I thought that. A lot of these bugs are pretty rare and don't affect very many people. Uh, this is a performance improvement. That's nice. OpenTX mixer bypass for Mambo and Tango 2 sticks. That decreases the latency. Uh, that's that's kind of cool. Um, now we're back to August of 2021. So more than a year ago. Um, not a lot of like earth shattering. Uh, my point is not a lot of really earth shattering uh, feature improvements. Whereas ExpressLRS, they're like, yeah, you want to access Betaflight over Wi-Fi from your receiver? Done. <laughs> you want to have your receiver connect to your Wi-Fi network so you can update firmware over Wi-Fi? Done. You want to... You want, you want 250 hertz? You want 500 hertz? You want 1,000 hertz? You want packet duplication? You want... Done. It's pretty crazy. So, um... That's what I think people are thinking of when they say that ExpressLRS is overtaking Crossfire, is that they're rolling out flashy features that get a lot of attention. And Crossfire isn't. I, I, I want to say one more thing. No, I'm not going to say it. Never mind. That's just me whining. I don't need to whine. I'll leave. That's not what we're here for. Um, TBS has struggled with, de with uh, development resources. Uh, I don't know the exact nature of the situation, but at least one of their developers and maybe more lived in Odessa, I'm told. Odessa is a uh, city in, uh, you may have heard of this country, Ukraine. Uh, and so they were affected, uh, apparently, by the situation there. Uh, and it meant that they didn't have as much time to work on firmware, or so I was told. Uh, in addition... Uh, TBS, I think they moved their office in Hong Kong to a different office, and I don't know the details of that, but it interrupted their ability to do development. So uh, those that has been going on in the last year or so. Um, here's what I'll say, though. TBS, at, at times in the past, it has appeared that TBS was going to be eclipsed, such as when Immersion RC Ghost released 2.4 gigahertz control link with LoRa, uh, with the Semtech LoRa chip, and uh, TBS released Tracer. So TBS always has stuff in the works that will impress you, but oftentimes it takes them longer to get to the punch before they release it. And sometimes it really amazes and delivers, and sometimes not as much. Like, I don't think Tracer made as big of a splash as... Uh, that you might have hoped. I mean, it certainly has wider adoption than Ghost, so it's got that going for it. Um, but uh, I'm not sure it made the splash that TBS was hoping it would make. Anyway. Um, there you go. Uh, RC Ritter, I don't know how many engineers TBS has. 